Okay, here we go. So this morning, good morning, Attorney Fullerton. Good morning to you. So we are starting <clears throat> part three of just worship. Part three of just worship. Some of you are listening in from the group. But if you go to the page for Just For My Soul Ministries, last week, and right at the tail end of the lesson, we got cut off in part two of Just Worship. I finished it <clears throat> on the Just For My Soul page, and it just dawned on me I did not share it with the Just For My Soul group. So I'm not quite sure how you're listening in, but if you're from the group, last week we got cut off about the last 10 minutes. You can get that from the Just For My Soul page. So the ministry has a public page and the ministry has a private group. <clears throat> and when I got back on, I forgot to share the second part with the group. So it is on the page. We had some technical difficulties. Whenever that happens, just stay on because I'm gonna try my best to log out and log back on and do what I gotta do. All right. So in this study of just worship. I think we did six weeks of studying praise, and now we're in week three of just worship. How these two twin powers, so powerful, <clears throat> working together, but yet very separate in what they accomplish, okay? So those of you who are just joining in, Please catch the previous weeks um, of studying praise. The power of praise is what we called it. And then the last three weeks, with this being week three, is just worship. Okay? So we're going to be in the Gospel of Matthew this morning. I want to welcome you for those who may be looking in for the first time. My name is Cheryl Oliver. And this is Just for My Soul Ministries. And our mission is peace and purpose for the soul through truth, love, and relationship. And our vision is to love and serve everyone, to love and serve everyone through biblical teaching, personal testimony, prayer, and mentoring for the glory of God. We are a discipleship ministry. We are learning, we are studying, we are growing in our relationship with Christ, and we are inviting you to come and grow along with us. That is who we are, and that is what we do. We are a discipleship ministry. So come on in here. Good morning. Good morning, Riri. I see my sweet Riri. Good morning, Kim. All right. So that's who we are, and that is what we do. Turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4. This is the third part, as I say, of a lesson titled Just Worship. As we're talking about the differences between praise and worship, yet they are twin powers. So this week, we're going to read verse 10, I'm sorry, verse 9 and verse 10 in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 9 and verse 10. And it reads, and he said to him, and this is Satan talking, let me give you a little background. This is when Jesus went on the fast at the beginning of his ministry for 40 days. 40 day fast, and he was there being tempted by the enemy. And each one of those temptations meant something very symbolic, very symbolic, lots of theology there. Um, but we want to look at something specific pertaining to worship. So we won't have time to get into the complete backstory, but I wanted you to know where this was located. And so here comes. Uh, one of Satan's ploys in verse nine. 
And he said to him, this is Satan talking to Jesus, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him and behold, Angels came and ministered to him. That was verse 9, 10, and 11. 9, 10, and 11. Good morning, Mr. Chauncey. So glad to have you with us. And super, super congratulations on your years of service and retirement. Chapter 4, verses 9, 10, and 11 was what I just read. <laughs> listen to it just one more time with me and he said to him all these things I will give you I want to stop right there I want to stop right there do you see the, the supposed temptation in a lie there's, there's nothing the enemy can give us that's worth anything. And he starts out saying, because see, Jesus was in a weakened state physically, but not spiritually. That's what the enemy didn't understand about fasting. Okay. I'm looking a certain way on the outside, but when all of this flesh is weak, my spirit is strong and I can see right through you. Now, that's my ad living. But that's for us to know. He's going to come in when there's an open door, a weakness, guards are down. With this, this tempted lie, because he actually has nothing to give him. And he goes on to say, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. So let me just stop right there. Last week, we learned about the, the posture of worship. Last week was powerful. You got to go back and listen to my little two parts. The first part, then we was cut off, and then the second part. But we talked about the position of worship, how praise is active. Um, your volume may be up. You know, it, it could be um, you praising God with a group of people. You got music going. Um, you're thanking him. Praise and thanksgiving kind of married together for who he is and what he's done. It's just a praise. Okay, praise helps us enter in. Psalms 100. Then we learned in Psalm 95, because we had started out with praise and then there's worship. Psalms 95 has both. And then Psalms 95, we talked about verse six and seven, that hush coming when he says to kneel and bow down. So now, Worship is hand in hand with surrender. When you've gotten quiet and it's not about, <clears throat> you know, praising him with a lot of noise, you know, for who he is and what he's done. And we, we, oh, we exhausted that for six weeks. Worship is, you bow down in a humble state, kneel, and just about everything I've studied and looked at scriptures with worship from Genesis to Revelation, um, you see just as tied together, worship and bow down. The noise stops. This is about God and his holiness. Your surrender and humility. It's a position of listening and obeying. Okay. It's a oneness. And there is not true worship without a redeemed soul and an obedient soul. And worship is expressed in everything you do. You can worship him with your words. You worship him with your actions. You worship him with your attitude. We tied all that together last week because it gives him glory. 
a living sacrifice, a living vessel of worship. Because when I came out of the bowed down, kneeled down state, surrendered and humbled, everything else came out that comes out of me is an agreement and obedience of what I was received, what I received in this position. Worship me with your words, your actions, your thoughts. Here's a powerful statement I live by, I teach, and it just gets down to the nitty gritty. When you're thinking, saying, or doing something, you ask yourself a question, a two-part question. Does this thought, word, or action worship God, or does it satisfy my flesh? Okay, that's tight, but it's right. Does this attitude, action, or thought worships God or satisfy my flesh? You can put anything to that test. You can answer that question any kind of way, but it's only two responses. Satisfying my flesh or is it worshiping God? Is it giving God glory? Is it giving God glory? So in this week, because we also stated, God created us for worship, service to the kingdom. When we serve the kingdom, our worship is in action because it's in obedience to the kingdom's agenda. So that's why verse nine is written the way it is. We're created for worship. And when God's creation, because you are not your own, you didn't put together your own heart, brain, cells, oxygen levels, kidneys, you're not your own God. We, we don't, we're, we're so independent in a lot of areas in this world from God because we are our own God. But let's not get it twisted. He is a creator and he created his creation to worship him by doing what it was created to do. Wind blows, trees grow leaves, apples are apples, bunnies hop, whales swim. That's what he created them to be. He created us for many things, but one is to worship him. So whatever in this world that gets your worship, hear me out. Our father is going to make sure that that idol will draw you back to him. Worship a person, worship a job, worship your children, worship a theme, worship an attitude, worship some whiny complaint that you didn't kept up for 10 years, worship unforgiveness. Whatever you worship, as the creator has created you to worship him, that thing is going to draw you back to him. All right. Been there. Live that. So now let's look at verse nine. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. The enemy wants our worship. And just turn on the news or listen to some of these songs on the radio and we give it to him. Look into relationships that are so unlike God's instructions. We're giving the enemy his worship. Wherever there's sin, he's getting his worship. Whenever there's life lived outside of the word of God, we're giving him his worship. Okay? So he was trying to get it out of Jesus because he sure enough got it out of Adam and Eve. Jesus, being the type of the second Adam, responded in verse 10. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan. I love that declaration. Satan, just go move around because I see you. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God. And him only shall you serve. 
So with spirit and truth, Jesus responded. One person gets my worship, and that is my father, because I know what he sent me to do. And I'm going to serve him and him alone in my thoughts, words, deeds, and actions. I'm going to serve him and him alone. And look at the enemy's response. Verse 11. Then the devil left. Him. See, if we don't give him what he wants, if we don't play with him with our thoughts, play with him with our actions, oh, just a little bit. No, Jesus shut it down. He wants us to come out of character. He wants us to come out of obedience. Adam and Eve did. He wants us to come out of instruction. And the reason we do is because we think there's something better. Or we get full of pride and ego. Or we get full of selfishness. I don't want to do it your way, Father. I want to do it the world's way. I want to identify with my own identity. I want to whatever. But when you live long enough and you've decided to try him authentically for yourself, not in a religious way, in a spiritual way, authentically for yourself, you will then discover there is nothing better. There is no temptation worth it. There is no lie worth it. There is no worldly idol worth it. And part of our journey of growth is realizing that, laying things down and obeying verse 10. And Jesus said to him, away with you, for it is written, I shall worship the Lord our God and him only you shall serve. Okay? Jesus didn't have to be convinced like us. His mind was made up. We are in a growth pattern of continual sanctification as we discover our way is not the best way. The surrendered, humble, obedient life to our Father is the best way with the best rewards. And it takes us a lifetime to figure that out. Yes, a lifetime. Okay, turn 50, still learning. You repent when you go off, you get back on track. It's the best way. What parent would not have the best, safest way for their child? Okay. What parent? And as parents, we score zero and God scores a 10. All right? So the idea that we had been speaking of, what I wanted to do this morning was actually show it to you. I wanted to show it to you. The enemy wants our worship. God says, you're going to worship and serve me alone. So my brothers and sisters, anything that draws you to the enemy ways and it starts taking up too much of your mind time, your heart, and your obedience to that thing, the Lord will make sure it drives you right back to him. Okay? Because there's nothing in it no satisfaction, no eternal reward at the end of that path is death. Whatever it is you're worshiping, loneliness. Okay? When we see people that we think got it all, and the next thing you read, they didn't kill themselves. That deep internal satisfaction the pit of our love and acceptance. And I got some lessons coming up about that. That that thing we want to lavish on somebody. I'm going to say this and be real strong, but ain't nobody and ain't no thing worth it. That belongs to God. And when you give your all to him first, everybody and everything under that will get the best of you because you will be trying to please him. Okay, That's how that works. Love the Lord your God 
with all your heart, mind, and soul. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. First and greatest commandment. Second one, just like it. Then love your neighbor as yourself. First commandment, this relationship. Second commandment, other relationships. God comes first. And the relationships under that relationship will be better because of a wife that worships God with her everything, she's better for her husband. A husband that worships God with his everything is a better father and a, and a better husband. An employee that worships God with everything, they're going to do that work unto the Lord. That's what the word says. This is our first priority, not the things of the, and the people in this world. It's just not. God made sure he kicked everybody and everything off the throne of my heart with a whole lot of pain. And he took his rightful seat on the throne of my heart. Okay? That's the process. It's a lesson after lesson. And when we finally say what Jesus said in verse 10, verse 11 states, and then the devil left him. And behold, angels came to minister to him. Angels came to minister to him. Yes, they did. And they will come and minister to us in our declaration of obedience to our Father, we will get supernatural help and everything we need. When it comes between you and that temptation, say, God, I can't do it, but I am surrendered enough for you to do it through me. Satan, get thee behind me today because I'm going to worship and serve God alone and the angels will bring you strength and courage his spirit will give you insight and wisdom and a satisfaction so deep. Now, that don't mean the enemy ain't going to come back and try tomorrow. You got to have the same declaration on your tongue tomorrow. That don't mean he's not going to come around the corner in a different suit. You got to have that same declaration and that same vision to see him. And he'll have to flee. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Uh, we're going to get ready to pray. I, got, I, can say I can't do two things at one time, so now I'm going to look back over here at this, these uh, words, comments. Then we're going to pray. Yes, Chauncey, that is good. The Holy Spirit, that is good, because I'm learning to worship goes hand in hand with surrendering. Thank you very, very much. God created us to worship. Yes, he did. And him alone. Jesus even said, it. speak the truth. Nothing better. My God, yes, reread. His way is the way. And oh, it would take us so long to figure that out. I remove thee. Come on now. We're we going to get into a whole bunch of this. We got some fire coming for the last six months of the year. So y'all hang in there. When I say fire coming, it's going to be in these weekly devotionals and prayer. And let me just go ahead and do this before I start praying. August the 13th, the second Saturday of every month are our teaching sessions. Okay, this in the mornings on Wednesday, I try to keep this about 30, 35 minutes. August the 13th at 9 a.m. If you can't jump on at 9.30 a.m., I'm sorry, 9.30, 9.30, 9.30. Watch it later on that, you know, Saturday when you have a moment. Um, I'm not going to even tell you the title. You don't want to miss Saturday. That's the 13th, second Saturday. The third Saturday in August, the 20th, we start our book study, Overcoming Rejection. Every human being needs this book study. Every human being. And you're going to hear why in our first, in our first chapter. Okay? So second and third Saturdays, second and third Saturdays, 
at 9.30 a.m. Facebook Live. Don't miss it. And then, of course, our weekly 5.30 a.m. Now, we're back on this evening. Let me give you the new time for the prayer line. It is in this Facebook post. It is at 8 p.m. Let me see. Did I, did I put it in the post? Sometime I need help. No, I didn't even put the time. I'm sorry about that. All right. So this evening's prayer, remember, it used to be at 9, but it is at 8 p.m., okay? Um, I, I pray that you remember that. And if you frequent the Wednesday evening prayer, please tell those people you know that, uh, that also frequent the prayer. It is moved up by one hour. It is at 8 p.m. Okay, we've been doing nine o'clock for two and a half years. We're now at 8 p.m. starting tonight. So if you frequent it, please put it in your phone as an alarm and call those you also know who jumps on on Wednesdays. So that's it. And we're about to go into prayer. And then I will invite those of you who may be listening into a relationship with Christ. Second and third Saturdays, 9.30 a.m. Every Wednesday morning, 5.30 a.m. Facebook Live. Every Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. Conference call only. All right. Father God in heaven, ooh, we thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. When, when we gain knowledge, when we seek you for wisdom and understanding, and you deliver God. It is such a divine empowerment. And Father, my prayer this morning begins with a forgiveness. When we thought we were worshiping you and were not. When our praise was hollow. So Father, we want to thank you for the truth and the revelation praise and worship. I'm asking you, Father, to now authenticate it in us. And may we understand the power sends the enemy fleeing. Help us recognize who you've created us to be. And we can stomp on and walk over the head of all serpents in our lives. Help us see it the way you designed it. Help us see it the way you orchestrated it for the kingdom, not in a religious factor, but in a truth factor, a spiritual factor. And we can declare and set our households in order through a decision we make in our mind. And may it start with worship. May it start with understanding praise and worship and fall in line. And my prayer is that we teach it to the next generations. Father, my prayer is that we have representatives up until the day you come back because we, are, we want lineage. We want fruit. Individuals that may not ever know our name, but they're great, 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 great grandma, grandfather, auntie, uncle, cousin, prayed for them. Prayer transcends time and space. So Father, I'm asking you to root these lessons into the hearts and souls of the ears that it falls on that want to hear it. Root it in them. May those roots go deep down underneath the river. Not to be moved. God, we love you. God, we need you. Father, we are so sorry for following our own way. We're asking you to forgive our fathers and mothers and spiritual leaders. And we just kind of latched on to what everybody was doing growing up. 
might not have been what was right. So have mercy, God, in those that went before us. Somebody breaks the cycle and it'll be us. So master, we need you. We are desperate for you. We declare in the name of Jesus that you can fill us and have your way. You can fill our homes, take over our thought processes, penetrate our hearts, get down into our wounds and uproot the lies, the hurt, the pain, the rejection, the abandonment, uproot it, pull it out and plant yourself down deep in our soul. That's the power of your love. Human love and human substances cannot touch my soul, but supernatural love can. So who here we are. And we are because of who you are. Give us a revelation of your sacrifice of love on the cross, because we ain't got it yet. I pray healing mentally, physically, and spiritually over every ear that receives this word, this lesson, and hears this prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. So those of you who may be going about your way, thank you, Miss Linda, for putting all that information in there. Because you know, I can't talk and type at the same time. Thank you, thank you, thank you this morning. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Go about your day. Now, I know some got to jump off. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Some got to jump off at 605. But those of you who may be listening and you, you are not sure that you have that relationship with Christ. You're not sure about your salvation. Let me talk to you. Give me, give me, give me a few more seconds. Okay, hear me out. The short prayer I want to pray with you to receive God as your Lord and Savior does not save you. Okay, don't, don't get it twisted. It's not a prayer that saves your soul. What saves your soul is what you decide to believe. Okay, you believe in the Trinity God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all one person with three different jobs. I'm, I'm sure the wife, sure the nurse, sure the minister, but it's still one person, three different jobs, right? You believe that. You believe that the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, loves you so much. He died the death that belongs to us because of sin. He died for us. He satisfied God the Father's declaration for sin, which is death. He said, I love them so much, let me die for them. You believe that. And you also want the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, God in spirit, to come and live inside of you and to help you now understand the Father, to help lead you, to heal you, to give you wisdom, to guide you. Now, if you believe that, the prayer is icing on the cake. And you know you're a sinner. No, no pride, no self-righteousness. You know you're ratchet and need help. And God loves you. Now we pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, here I am. Here I am. And I've been wanting things my own way and doing things my own way a long time. And it's got me nowhere. I believe what Reverend Oliver just said. And I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want your spirit to Heal me and guide me, and I surrender my life over to be saved because I'm a sinner. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Now, don't let the enemy try and lie to you that you're not saved. If you believe what we just talked about with your whole heart, because he's coming, because he wanted to stay your God. But now you said, no, you go to hell. I, I'm, I'm going to hook up with the real God. Okay. Now you got to grow. Now your faith has to grow. Your knowledge has to grow. Your wisdom has to grow. You only grow when you seek him. So you got to get in your word. You got to construct a prayer life. You got to talk to him all day, every day. And then after a while, you will be telling the enemy as Jesus did. <laughs> Go on out of here. Away with you. That's what he's saying right here. Away with you, Satan. So, welcome to the kingdom. Amen. All right, y'all. Love y'all. I got to go. I know many of you got to go to work and everything else. Woo! This was a good lesson this morning. I must say myself. Thank you, Lord. All right. I love you. God loves you. And I need you to always remember God is truly the lover of your soul. Bye-bye for now.